Welcome to the CXR channel, our premier podcast for talent acquisition and talent management. Listen in as the CXR community discusses a wide range of topics focused on attracting, engaging, and retaining the best talent. We're glad you're here. Welcome, everybody, to another uh, CXR podcast. I'm excited today. We have uh, a new guest. I don't think, Russ, have you ever, I don't think you've ever even been on one of our, our podcast shows, have you? Yeah, first time. Yeah, welcome. Welcome to the show. Appreciate you having me, man. Thanks. Uh, we do these weekly. If you're just dialing in, you're sort of getting uh, tuned up and catching up with us, uh, we do these weekly. Typically, they're uh, live streamed uh, to YouTube, and then we go ahead and clean them up a little bit. We put a bumper on the front and back. Uh, with our engineer and throw them out onto the stream. So you can obviously subscribe to these anywhere that you listen to uh, your favorite podcasts. So be sure you do that. You can also check out the rest of these uh, and future shows at cxr.org slash podcast. But with today in mind, Russ, uh, I want to give you, before we just sort of jump in, get to know you and what you're up to, I want to give you just a second to kind of do a, do an escalator pitch uh, of who is Russ Gibson and, and why do we care what he, he thinks? Why do we care what he thinks? <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to uh, care too much about what I think. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, the manager of talent acquisition over at Quantum Health, a hyper growth company, health navigation organization in Columbus, Ohio. I've uh, been there for about three years and overseeing that talent acquisition function since I've been there. Um, previous to that was with Victoria's Secret and L Brands for about six and a half years running their TA group. And I've been in talent acquisition my entire career. Uh, intentionally, uh, decided not to go towards employee relations or anything like that. I like getting them in the door. I don't like dealing with them afterwards. So uh, I kind of have a strong passion for TA and, and the candidate experience. So you're an Ohio guy, right? Uh, through and through, right? So you're saying right out, right out of college, you went straight into TA? Yeah, on accident, though. I was a criminology major, and it's a long story, but I, I uh, took me about eight months to figure out that I wasn't going to get a job doing forensics. So uh, reached out to an agency uh, to just help me figure out what I was going to do with my life. And they asked me if I've ever recruited before. And I said, well, what the hell's that? So uh, <laughs> once, once I figured it out, I was like, oh, I kind of have a knack for this. And then I uh, just fell in love with it. So yeah, it's kind of a happy accident. Criminology. Yep. Yeah. So are there just, I'm, I know this is not what we were going to talk about, but I'm just curious. Are there, have you, have you found any skills that sort of cross over from criminology into recruiting? Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, you're essentially interviewing and interrogating people kind of all day. Right. So that there, there's part of that. Um, obviously, a lot of people interaction um, when you're searching online, you've got to research and dig in and kind of figure out who's who and what resume matches up with what job and skill set. And then you've got to figure out the right questions to draw out the information that you need. So there's a lot of correlations there, actually. It's, it's pretty odd. I love it. I love it. Well, so <laughs> Russ, what are you up to lately? What, what's going on for you in the world uh, of quantum health and, and recruitment over there? Yeah, it's been a crazy ride. We have seen hyper growth since I started. I started in June of 2019. And at the time we had probably 700 employees. And since I've been there, I think we're over 1800 now. So we've more than doubled since we've been there. Wow. Um, we have a, a large mix of high volume, uh, non-exempt positions, clinical roles, and a lot of purple squirrel kind of exempt roles to recruit for uh, within, you know, the IT space and, and uh, whatnot. So it's, it's a really challenging opportunity to kind of cater to all those audiences. Um, and what we do is just very unique. It's a healthcare navigation company. So we just help people navigate their benefits plans. We're not the insurance provider. So people, you know, you have to tell that story and people are a lot of times we do a lot of marketing. Yeah, for our jobs and advertising, but people still don't necessarily know what we do. So a lot of what we're focusing on this year is realistic job previews. What who, who is quantum? Why would you want to work here? What's the value prop? Uh, we're going to redo our careers page this year um, to have, you know, separate landing pages for all those different disciplines that we have high needs for and um, just really put out engaging content so people can understand what the story of quantum is and why they'd want to work here. Because we have a great story to tell. We just haven't really done it very well yet. So that's definitely a big focus of ours. Is that, would you say that's one of your sort of so brand awareness? Would you say that's one of your biggest challenges? Yeah, I think so. I mean, people know of the brand locally because we advertise so much, but they don't know who we are and why it's great to work here or what is the jobs that you actually even offer, right? So we've got to do a better job at that. Um, and, you know, a lot of times as we have seen turnover, especially last year, the disconnect of folks that decided to leave was the, the type of work. So they didn't quite understand what they were getting themselves into. So we just need to do a better job of, of telling what that is. 
Uh, and I think hopefully we'll, instead of going through 7,000 applicants to get the hires we need, maybe we can knock that down in half, right? So. Nice. So it's slim in the funnel, so to speak. Yeah, that's the hope. I'd rather have people opt out up front, you know, than halfway through training, you know, and, and if it's not for you, it's not that, you know, it's not an easy job here. So if it's not for you, that's great. Just, you know, we want to make sure you know what you're getting yourself into up front. Yeah. How, how big of an impact do you think the RJPs will have with that when you, when you get those set up and run it? It'll do a lot because as we think about the roles that we have, especially on the front lines with our contact center folks, like it's a very critical thinking kind of fishing in the ocean. You never know what kind of call you're going to get type of role. There's no script to help you. You're navigating multiple screens. A lot of times you're talking to some people on their worst day or maybe they just got diagnosed with cancer and they need help. So you've got to be able to navigate that and to empathize with that person. But at the same time, we technically savvy to work multiple screens and systems uh, so it's not an easy job by any means. Um, so, you know, I think being able to put out that video and just really paint a picture and some testimony about what it's like to really do that job. And not every call is that heavy, you know, by any means, yep. but um, you're certainly dealing with some some stuff like that from time to time. Wow. Would you say would you say that's your biggest focus right now, your biggest challenge? It's definitely one of them because our, our, our turnover last year spiked up quite a bit. So my first year, we hired about 700 people, both internally and externally. Second year is about 750. And then last year went up to almost 1400. So wow. we jumped up a ton. And a lot of that was because of the turnover. There were some other factors that went into that in terms of, you know, market compensation and, and whatnot to be more competitive. But um, a lot of it was just, you know, people opting out after they got here because it just wasn't what they thought it was. So we've got to connect those dots for them ahead of time. Yeah, well, that'll be that'll be a big play in that for sure. Yep. How uh, how big is the recruiting team you've got, Russ? So for when I first started, it was me and three recruiters. Uh, and then over the last couple of years, it's been me, four recruiters and a coordinator. Um, so a very lean team for the for what we yeah. do. Um, the good news is we just uh, opened up Rex to hire two more recruiters, three more coordinators, uh, another manager of uh, operations and pod clinical recruitment, and then we have a director of TA too. So uh, excited that we're finally going to be fully staffed here soon. <laughs> good for you. You want to plug uh, the jobs page if you if you got <laughs> for people to apply. yeah yeah it's just uh, quantum healthcom forward slash careers. So by all means, go there and and check it out. Um, you know, for the most part, we do require folks to be in the Columbus Ohio area. So if you're not local, certainly we would need to be open to relocate or at least maybe a telecommute. We're we're working on that flexibility piece. It's funny because you see, you know, I'm I'm in Austin, so we see a lot of stuff sort of open and then shut down, just like everywhere else, open and then mm -hmm. then shut down partially. And you know, we went to dinner last night for Valentine's Day, my partner and I, and she, um, you know, she had made notice of how many tables were actually in the restaurant. Uh, and funny enough, the the server that we had had said that um, forty percent of the tables in the restaurant were rented that hmm. they knew even with the pandemic and people starting to get, you know, trying to get back to their new normal, they knew they were going to be packed. They yeah. weren't so packed. We did the early bird special, right? We went super early, but they weren't so packed when we got there. But she said before, before they would close, they would probably have turned each of those tables maybe six times that evening. And, and when I tell you they're packed, I mean, they're packed. Like they were little, little square two by two, you know, tables hmm. in the restaurant. And I, I was just fascinated that like it slammed. Like we're, we're, right, everybody's sort of getting back to normal. Are you, are you sort of seeing the same thing where you are and, and trying to figure out what's normal for you guys at work? Yeah, we're getting there. Oddly enough, I just got a notification from our school district yesterday saying they were going to lift the mask mandates in school uh, as of tomorrow. So it seems like things are starting to come to slowly to an end. We're still working remotely, at least some of us at Quantum. Um, just to right now is our peak season of calls. So we're trying to limit any type of exposure to anybody sick to pull them off the phones because we want to be able to support our clients and members really well. Um, but I think at the end of February, we'll probably all go back into the office and, and, and pick up business as usual. I always like to talk about what's going on in the space and then how, how we're sort of seeing that play out in the workplace and with, and with our recruiters. I mean, we're talking about mask mandates getting lifted and we're talking about going back to work, you know, back to the workplace, right. And less remote, but in, you know, Two breaths later, I think um, we were just talking about the conferences that were due in March have, have been moved out two months because speakers are dropping and attendance, mm -hmm. you know, registrations are getting revoked. So uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of an interesting weird time. 
Yeah, very much so. We were supposed to go out to San Diego, I think, in January for a conference. And then last minute, like the week before, they, they moved it all virtual. Um, just, I think, for that same reason. So, yeah, it's, it's crazy. In, in different pockets, it seems to be um, just going, you know, some are accelerating a little bit more quickly towards mask mandate lifts and all that stuff. But uh, we're kind of, I'd say, status quo. I don't think we're leading the pack by any means. Yeah, well, it's great to hear that you guys are hiring uh, and push forward on stuff. I love the I love the brand work that you're getting ready to do. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited this year to to really expand on that. I think when we have a more full team, we'll be able to really get a lot more strategic on how we're positioning ourselves out in the market. So, very excited on what's to come this year. Good stuff. Well, Russ, before we get out of here, is there anything you would um, anything you'd want everybody to know either about yourself as as a pro or maybe even about quantum, like? you want to leave us with sort of a parting thought on, on what's going on in your space? Yeah. I mean, I would just say, you know, what's interesting for us is I think we were so hyper-focused in our growth that it was all about recruiting, 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 recruiting. And we kind of lost focus on retention. And, you know, that's where we see our turnover kind of spike up because of that. So I would definitely say, you know, as you kind of, you're in a growth business, you know, put us just, just as much, if not more, you know, emphasis on your retention because, you don't want to lose your good folks as you're trying to bring in additional new good folks. And, um, you know, I think that's only going to get even stronger. You know, internal mobility is going to be a huge effort, I think, this year for a lot of companies, including yeah. ours, um, you know, and speed. And, and that's the, it's always been speed's the name of the game, but it's just getting even faster, you know. And um, like you talked about flexibility and that sort of thing, we've always kind of taken the peanut butter approach and just supplied, you know, one concept to everybody, but it doesn't work that way. So, you know, in what pockets can we provide flexibility? What roles, some roles can, some roles can't. So like, how do we adjust to that and make it fair for everybody? But um, at the same time, understand that certain functions don't necessarily have to be in the office. Yeah, well, I think <laughs> I might have to steal the peanut butter approach. I do like that though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Russ, well, look, we love doing these quick chats, catching up, introducing people to the space. I think this is just a really great way for, I think, you know, not just our members, but other folks in the industry to get to know you a little bit and, and what you do. So we really appreciate you giving us a little bit of time today. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me, man. I look forward to hopefully doing it again in the future. Yeah, it's good stuff. And then uh, for those who are still on their treadmill or still dialed in, uh, we've got, uh, I think on February 22nd, uh, we have a guest coming on who is a wisdom coach. You're going to want to not miss that. Uh, and then, of course, for our members, I'm super excited. We're doing the second in our uh, lecture series coming up on February 24th, where we're going to talk. We've got a guest speaker coming in to talk on empathy. Uh, so it's going to be good stuff. So uh, you can find all of that stuff at cxr.org slash events. And until next time, we'll see you guys online. Thanks for listening to the CXR channel. Please subscribe to CXR on your favorite podcast resource and leave us a review while you're at it. Learn more about CXR at our website, cxr.works, facebook.com and twitter.com slash career crossroads and on Instagram at career X roads. We'll catch you next time.